This lesson is about text files. We must answer a few questions. Firstly, what is a text file? And secondly, why are we using it? Well, a text file is something that you can create in Notepad. There's one that I created. It is merely text. There are no formatting characters or anything inside the text. In other words, it's not a Microsoft Word document. And we use text files because for the first time we can use Delphi to save our data as well as to load data from text files and manipulate that. It should be clear to you that in order to use text files, you will need good string handling and character handling skills. By the way, text files normally have the extension of .txt, but in this case, it has the extension of .csv because this file is a comma-separated value file. Each of the different items is separated from the other, by a comma. Most of the text files you will be using will have a name, a full stop, and then .txt. Let's have a look at this program. In this program, we are using a text file. I have a button on the form. If we double click on the button, we get to this area, and I have these two variables, tf of type text file and one line of type string. In this case, our text file consists of a number of lines of text, one after the other, in a text file. As a matter of fact, the text file I'm using is Pygmalion.txt. I went to the internet and downloaded the whole book called Pygmalion by George Bernard Shaw, and we have this as a text file. So let's look at the details of this program. If file exists Pygmalion.txt is not equal to true. In other words, if the file Pygmalion.txt does not exist, then we must show this message. And if it does exist, in other words, alternatively, then we can continue with our program. You might find a better way of writing this condition. I'm not going to show you now, but there's definitely a better way of writing this condition. So file exists is a Delphi function which returns either true or false. And it looks for the physical file on the disk, and if it's there, it produces true, and if it's not, it produces false. So let's assume it is true, then we can go to this line. tf is the file access variable. It's the variable that we use to refer to the text file. And this is the line where we link the two. Assign file tf, link the file access variable tf, to this specific position on the hard disk, pygmalion.txt. Reset opens the text file and moves the file pointer to the start of the file. Therefore, ready to start reading. Now we have a loop. While not in the file tf, do all of this. eof is a function, and it stands for end of file, and it refers to the end of file position in this file, the one that tf refers to. And we know that that is pygmalion.txt. So, while we have not reached the end of the file, do the following. Read line from this text file, a string called one line. Now we created our string up here. This command, read line, will read one whole line from the text file and store it into the variable one line and then move the file pointer to the next line. So this line you know well, readout.lines.add, one line. And it will keep on doing this until we reach the end of the file. And once we've finished with that, we must close file tf. You must always do that at the end of your program to prevent your file from becoming corrupt. Let's run this program and see what it does. Click on the button and you can see there's a bit of a pause while it reads. And here, every line of the whole book, Pygmalion, written by George Bernard Shaw, is produced on my rich edit. If I move down in the rich edit, you will see that I actually have the whole play here. Now I want to come back to this sort of text file. This text file has a number of items on the same line and each of them is separated from the other by a comma. So in this case I have a name of a student and then test1, test2, test3 and a comment. Now this type of text file needs to be read indifferently. We would like to put these values for name, for test1, for test2, test3, and the comment, into different variables. So let's open a program where I've started preparing for this situation. 
In this program, it has a different name, but I've used the same interface. So let's go and look at the code underneath the button. I have a number of different variables. We still need the file access variable, tf, which I must now connect to a different type of text file. And then I have one line, which we used in the previous program as well, and a variable for the name, three variables for the marks, and a variable for the comment. Notice that these variables for the marks I am leaving as string variables because I am not going to manipulate them. If you want to multiply or add them together, you can convert them to numbers yourself. And then I have a variable called pos comma, which will indicate the position of the comma in the string that I've read. So this first section is exactly the same. If file exists, and now my file name is term1marks.csv. So if this file does not exist, then show the message, otherwise link the file access variable and the file. And this must happen in every program where you use a text file. Reset the text file so that the file marker moves right to the top and it's ready to be read. Now, once again, I have a loop. I'm looping through the file from the beginning to the end, while not end of file, tf, do this. Let's have a look at the text file while we are talking about the program. Read line from the text file, a whole line, and store it into one line. So, after that line's been executed, this whole line is stored into one line. Pause comma is now equal to the position of the comma in one line. If we look at this one, then pause comma is one, two, three, four, five, and name becomes copy from one line, from position one, to pause comma minus one. In other words, just those first four characters. Then we delete from one line, starting at position one, right up to pause comma. So I delete from one line the word name and the comma. And now one line consists of only test one, test two, test three, and the comment. We repeat this process in order to get test one, and then test two, and then test three, and ultimately the comment. And once I've got all of those variables, I can display them on our rich edit, neatly in columns, separated with a tab character, and let's have a look and see what this does. So there's the result of our program. We have read in these five variables, name, test one, test two, test three, and the comment, and we've displayed them neatly in columns using the hash nine character. It's probably a good time to also mention that in text files of this type, the character that separates our fields is called a delimiting character or a delimiter. And in our case, it is specifically a comma. In the textbook, they use a hash to delimit the different fields.